Yo guys, thanks for tuning in to yet another episode of Yankee in Japan. As always, an American Yankee in the land of the rising sun. So if you've ever lived in Japan or had Japanese food or even traveled to Japan, you might know that Japan is home to some pretty strange food, at least strange to us in the West. Some common examples might be preserved foods like natto. It's basically fermented soybeans. It's really sticky and stinky, but Japanese foods are also known to be good for your health. Today's food, I'm not too sure if it's good for your health, but it is strange. And I'm in quite an adventurous Epicurean. Nothing has ever stopped me before. I've had fish testicles, I've had sea cucumber, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Today at the local Super Tamade, which in Japan is a, specifically in Osaka, it's a really cheap kind of discounted supermarket. Bright lights, neon, cheap, glamorous. It's definitely uh, Osaka style. Super Tamade is known for selling really cheap stuff, and today I found a rare treat. At first, I didn't know what I was looking at, but then I did some research online and I found out what it was. So today, we'll be trying out chicken, fallopian tubes, and pre ovulated eggs. Sounds delicious, right? So I was looking online and I found a recipe, and I want to share it with you guys. It's all in Japanese, I'll be providing a link, but I'll also be kind of breaking down a basic translation. So if you ever find this in your local supermarket in Japan, but it seems to be pretty rare, if you do, definitely check it out. This comes from the website eatpick.com and the name of the poster, her name is Osaka Okan Chef. Osaka is the name of the city where I live in. It's known for its food. It's known as the food kitchen of Japan. Okan is uh, the Osaka dialect. Osaka is interesting. It's a part of Japan in the Kansai area and in Kansai they are known to have their own dialect. Despite being a really small country, Japan is home to a lot of dialects some of them like foreign languages to most Japanese speakers. Uh, so she's basically calling herself the Osaka Mama Chef. Okan means mama or mother in the Osaka dialect. So Osaka Okan Chef is going to tell us how to make chicken fallopian tubes and pre ovulated eggs. Let's check it out. Tamahimoto wa tori no rankan to hairan mai no tamago no koto. Basically, fallopian, uh, fallopian tubes and pre ovulated eggs. So first and foremost, the supermarkets and places that sell this rare treat are few and far between. You'll find that this pre-ovulated egg is a lot different, completely different from a normal egg. And once you have one bite, you'll be hooked. So I had this once at a yakitori place and I thought, what the heck is this? I was shocked. And from that point onwards, I decided if I saw this at the supermarket, I would make this at home. So the Tama, which means ball in Japanese, which in this case is the pre-ovulated egg. It's very elastic and even though you might cook it and boil it, it doesn't get dried out like a normal egg. And as for the himo, which means string in Japanese, which is a fallopian tube, it's very soft and you'll find out that it goes well with any type of alcohol. Otsumami are snacks or different foods that go well with alcohol. And let's find out how to make it. So we're going to actually go in the kitchen, cut this thing up, Prepare it and hopefully it doesn't taste like crap. First of all, let's find out what we'll need to make this delicious treat. Hopefully it's delicious. Of course, first and foremost, we need the Tamahimo. Next, as you can see, it's very bloody. Looks good, right? Next, we'll be needing, in Japanese, shoga. Wrong way, shoga. In English, ginger. Futsu no shoga ga nai kara, shoga nai ne. Next, we'll need soy sauce. Soy sauce. Next, we'll need cooking alcohol. Cooking alcohol. Sake. And lastly, actually not last, it calls for sugar. I have stick sugar here. It also calls for uh, meeting, which is sweet rice wine. Unfortunately, I don't have that. 
so I'll be doubling down on the sugar. Step one, put the fallopian tubes into boiling water and boil for about three minutes. You're going to want to boil these fallopian tubes until they turn white. Next, you're going to take out the pieces of fallopian tube and put them into a coriander. Make sure they're dry. Once you take them out, you'll cut them into easy bite-sized pieces of about three to five centimeters. Step three. One thing you'll notice about the fallopian tubes is if you push out, uh, if you push out the fallopian tubes into like a cutting board, you'll notice that this white powder might come out. And if you don't do that, the smell will actually remain inside the fallopian tube. So this point is, this step is actually very important. Push firmly, but not too firm on the fallopian tubes, kind of like how you do clay when you're pushing down clay and make sure you get out that white powder so that you don't have a stinky meal. After you get out all that nasty, stinky crap, make sure to wash out the fallopian tubes. And if you have fresh ginger, slice up your ginger and get that ready to go. All right, next, once you wash all that stuff out and you cut your ginger, put everything into a pot, you add all your seasoning. And from there, you're just going to simmer it the same way that you do liver. And you can adjust the seasoning as you like, add more, add less. You can mix it up if you want to. From there, you're going to simmer this baby for about 15 minutes. Wait till all the juice goes down. And then after it's done, it's gonna be thick and shiny. When you see that shine, baby, you know it's all done. And that means you're ready to chow down. And we're finished. And just for good measure, I also brought some men soup. This is used for a variety of different dishes in Japan. It's like an all-purpose kind of uh, soup broth. Let's check it out. Got my chopsticks. I've got my heart ready. Itadakimasu. First, we'll be trying the himo, which is the fallopian tubes. Bon appetit. Mm. The texture is a lot like gizzards. My mom always used to make gizzards uh, for us when we were kids. It's chewy. It is actually not bad. I, I do like this texture. It's um, what in Japanese they call korikori, which is kind of chewy and firm, similar to gizzard or grizzle. I do think that it needs a little bit more flavor. So my bad for throwing out the uh, the broth. And next, the tama, the fallopian eggs, fallopian eggs, the pre-ovulated eggs. Hmm. It is quite different from a regular egg. It's a lot softer, and just like we read in the description, it has some firmness to it, some bounce to it, some dangryoku, which is kind of like bounce or firmness. It's a little bit like um, biting into a bouncy ball, but not as firm, not as hard. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Not bad overall. If you season this right, it should come out pretty, pretty good, I think. Uh, I do like the texture. If you grew up in the South, where I did, where, you, where you're used to eating various parts of different animals, you don't really have any um, resistance or you don't feel strange about eating the, the awful, the, th the thrown out parts of certain animals and certain foods, I think you'll like this. The idea is kind of gross and creepy, but if you just kind of open up your mind and open up your heart, to the possibility that you might like something strange like I do, then I think you'll enjoy this meal. So, final verdict, not bad. So guys, what'd you think? I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're feeling adventurous and you ever see something like this in the supermarket, I encourage you to try it out. Boys and girls, be ambitious. Thank you very much.